Here we are in the wild. We got a wild crab here. These are the kind of crabs you find in the Caribbean. Oh, this would be a good intro, hold up. Welcome back to the video. We're currently in Martinique, but this video is gonna start in St. Lucia. We got this crab here. It was something of a project trying to catch him. I'll tell you that much. Not really. Ah! Yeah, enjoy the video. Now I can't begin to tell you guys how much I do love the ocean. In the previous video, I reunited with my family after five months of not seeing them. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> I regained my familiarity with Zatara. That's the boat we spent eight years on, then proceeded to weigh anchor, cast off all lines, and start the journey to Puerto Rico. The previous video ended with us making our way past St. Lucia to Martinique, which is where this one begins. There. I've been catching fish like, like, there ain't nothing happening. Caught a big old sailfish this morning, had to get him off the hook. Really? And then a big old marlin just pulled me. Boom. Took my hook and all, everything. It took the whole reel. No, I didn't think the whole reel, I, he broke off before it took everything. St. Lucia. That right there is where we're going. Uh, apparently we've anchored there for one night, but other than that, that's all the experience I have there. It's and where? St. Lucia. And we are sailing to the St. Lucia. Wait, where is it? To the St. Lucia. What? So for those thinking, oh, it's unsafe to go on deck. Oh, you can't go on deck when you're sailing. Sail. Sailing. Big mountain island. And granted, there's times we deem it unsafe to go on deck if it's too rocky, if it's too rolly, if we think we're actually at risk of falling off then we're not gonna go on deck, but nine times out of 10, it's pretty calm. We only ended up spending one night in St. Lucia and I didn't get much film of it, so we continued on to Martinique. Yo, what's it like being back on the boat with your brother and sister? It's, it's like it's being good. It's being like it's good, cause it's been good and fun. This is my brother Finn, and he recently spent four months traveling in a van around Western America. He's also staying on the boat for a while. Do I miss my van? I actually do a little bit. I was watching some some of my some of my van life YouTube videos. I've only uploaded two of them, but I was watching some of them last night, and I was kind of like, "Dang, I miss my little my van that I can do anything I want in it and go anywhere I'd like." But it's been fun, you know. I'm glad to be back with my brother and my sister, and my mom and my dad. He just loves me. He's just so glad to be back with me. Okay, I'm going inside. It's a little rolly. I haven't introduced two new members on our boat. You. I'm Mackenzie's mom. <laughs> and I'm Mitchell. I, well, you know, I'm, I'm Mackenzie's just Mackenzie's dad. mom. I don't have a name. So you guys are going to be with us all the way to Puerto Rico then? Yes, exactly. we are. All right. Yeah. Anyways, those are the parents of Mackenzie. My parents. We've had a lot of good conversation around the table. Because, I mean, how often do you get your girlfriend's parents and your own parents living together for more than, Almost. yeah, I mean, that's a long time. That's like boot camp. <laughs> yeah, really. Okay, cool. Shortly after that, we arrived at Martinique. We dropped the hook and the dinghy and had a few things that needed tending to ASAP. See it through the trees? I was born in Texas, which means I am from America, which means I do indulge a little bit. I'm not ashamed of it, because when you, travel around the world so much, you understand what's reliable, what you can lean on. And we lean on McDonald's, isn't that right? That's right. What's that like for you, Dad? Only in a foreign country is McDonald's good. So this is the new washing machine, and you can see right here, it says Synthetique and Delica and Lening Blanc. We're in a French-speaking country, and the washer Believe it or not, is a French washer. So, I don't know what constitutes it being a French washer. It is an upgrade from our Greek washer that we previously had. That was a nightmare to try and read. 
Now this is the hole we ripped it out of. It's quite a large hole. Washer installation time. Now when it comes to living on a boat, you're very self-sufficient. Home appliances are maintained and installed by us. In fact, if something is broken, it's up to us to fix it because there's not a Home Depot or Lowe's or Bed Bath & Beyond around the corner we can go to. Right there, right there. I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay. It's okay, it's no big deal. Back in that corner, there's a string coming through that hole. All right, don't pull on it yet. Okay, yeah. And then you're alone. There you go. Oh, I'd have gotten it. Yeah. There, there. Yeah. 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 Plug it in, Kate. There we go. Oh. After the evening had concluded, we decided to camp out on the beach. Now, this is something we do quite often being in the islands. This is what we got going because it's raining a lot here in Martinique. Uh, we got this tarp above us we've kind of secured and four five six points and then we got Finn's hammock and then my hammock where me and Kins are going to try to share she has a, a weird hammock with some really thick line which could be a project to set up so we're gonna try to sleep in the same hammock for tonight we have the fire pit which oh they're trying to start check it out the only problem with these sticks is that they are very, very wet. And then like they do in the movies. After hanging around the campfire for a wee bit, we decided to take a journey into the woods. After a bit of walking and bushwhacking, we stumbled across these really strange looking ruins. Other than the fact that they're very creepy to look at and shine the light at, we, for some reason or another, decided to keep going. Now, keep in mind, I'm barefoot through all of this. You got steps here. It's quite cool. Oh my gosh. That is quite eerie. Oh, my God. oh, that's nice. That's where they put the bodies, eh? Oh no. Yo, are you okay, dude? Dude, I fell. Oh, I don't think I can move. <laughs> Let me try and get up. Let me. I think I'm okay. Dude, how do I get out of here? This, this is, like is so big. stupid. As we continued on, McKinsey decided to go into this building that looked like it was on its last limbs. I mean, there was scaffolding on the inside and there were these wooden beams literally holding it up on the outside, preventing it from falling down. After that, we went back to base camp and tucked it in for the night. Yo, we got food. How's that? Good. It's not too bad. It's cool off. All right, let's see. I'm gonna put this leg out. This is what we got going. I'm like, not even three feet off the ground. Oh my gosh, <laughs> jump scare. I think if that concludes the night, I will update you guys in the morning or in the middle of the night if we happen to get rained on. Yeah, well, you know, I think I may have spoken too soon. Look how it, it's dripping. Dude, it's all leaking down. So, we woke up. It's uh, 5.30. We woke up to the rain. The only issue is, is that my hammock is collecting all the water. Look at that, dude. Oh my god, there's so much water. Bro, your hammock's like so... Yeah, do it. Well, me and Finn took down our hammocks because they were taking on the most water. We took our bags and our hammocks and we just clipped them all, the Finn's carabiner in the center. Kenzie's still chilling. Mm -hmm. The bugs were so loud last night, but I was lucky because I found, with my pillow, I found the perfect spot where it kind of muffled my ears. 
and everything wasn't as loud. I ended up actually sleeping, I think, fairly long. This is the final look of our campsite. Now, it was a genius idea bringing that tarp. After we all woke up, we enjoyed the morning a little bit, talked amongst each other. We cleaned up the campsite, got all our trash, and awaited Mint and Dina to pick us up on the dinghy. Once they got there, we left, headed straight back for the boat, put everything up, pulled the hook, got the sails out, and made our way to Guadalupe. You guys know those charts I was showing off in the previous video. I said we don't use those often. It's because we don't. We, I don't think we've ever pulled those out to plot a course. Because we use this. This is our navigating machine. If I go right here, we have our full course updated in real time. So there's a few things you'll notice from this chart. Is first, we have 969. Nice. That's our depth. This is the depth sounder. This tells us how deep we are. Then you have the regular charts where we're at, you know, geographically. It's uh, underwater topography is what you're looking at with all these lines here. Then you have your various instruments here telling you how fast you're going your course, your waypoint bearing, your true wind speed, your parent wind speed, your time till destination, and your distance till destination. All of these are quite useful when it comes to navigating. And then over here we've got some more wind instruments. I don't know how well you can see them. We've got some autopilot features here and the depth sounder right there as well. Whenever we first started sailing and boat life, all of this was so foreign to us. We didn't understand most of it. I mean, we, we knew kind of what it did, but at least to me, it was all so foreign. But now, the you know, I've done it for I don't know how many years, it's, it's very familiar to me. After arriving at the beautiful island of Guadalupe, me and Mackenzie decided to take on the foiling together like me and Finn did in the previous video. Now this was super fun for me, it was good for her because she's never done anything relating to foils or wakeboarding before. As the evening died down, I decided I didn't want to do anything. So I went on deck, I pulled my book out, and I just enjoyed where we were. I enjoyed the sounds of the ocean, the warm weather, the sounds of the boat, the gentle rocking. It's moments like these where I really appreciate where I'm at, whether I'm reading a book or watching other boats pull into the anchorage. Now, if you've made it this far, I just wanted to say thanks for watching because this is the end of the video. Keep an eye out for part three, and I'll see you guys in the next one when we get to Puerto Rico. Bye-bye.